Paramount's big-budget Hollywood adaptation of Masamune Shiro's legendary manga series Ghost in the Shell has attracted attention for a lot of reasons, and they're not all good. The manga has been adapted into several animated movies and TV shows since its 1989 debut, and they've all deviated from the source material a bit. But the Scarlett Johansson-led live-action remake has earned the most attention, mostly because someone with the name Johansson doesn't seem like quite the best fit for a Japanese character. With talk of Hollywood whitewashing abound, the verdict already seems to be in when it comes to the leading lady. But what about the other members of the Section 9 Special Ops team? Here's how they should really look. The Major Major Motoko Kusanagi is a cyborg whose only organic parts are her brain and spine. And when she first appeared in Shiro's drawings, she was a slightly immature gunslinger with bright pink hair and purple eyes. In the anime, she's given a pretty dour makeover, with black hair and blue-gray eyes. And thanks to its critical success, the character had become most recognizable as an emotionless killing machine. This is the angle director Rupert Sanders and his team of writers have taken with a live-action film, and it suits Scarlett Johansson well, since she's already portrayed similar characters in multiple movies. But really, we all know what the problem is here. Johansson addressed the issue of whitewashing in an interview with Marie Claire, explaining, I would never presume to play another race of a person. Diversity is important in Hollywood, and I would never want to feel like I was playing a character that was offensive. So, while there's no shortage of Japanese actresses with blockbuster experience who could have taken the role, and Johansson isn't terrible to look at, it's just not true to the source material. Bato Section 9's lead investigator Bato is the franchise's most prominent male character, and that's never changed. The same can't be said of his appearance, however. He's had a shaved head and a ponytail on occasion, though the short-tempered gearhead is best known for his white crew cut. Hollywood has opted to keep Bato short and trim, just as he was in the 1995 anime. And they've also kept one of the character's most defining features, Bato's cybernetic eyes. These disc-like objects bulge comically when Bato loses his cool in the manga, which actor Pilu Aspeak based his portrayal of the character on, rather than the anime. The live-action version of Bato is a pretty solid match for the manga version, while anime Bato is more of a towering jarhead, a man with a long face that gives nothing away. Aspeak pulls off the hairstyle and manages to not look stupid with the cybernetic eyes, though for a perfect score, he probably should have spent more time in the gym. Aramaki Lieutenant Colonel Daisuke Aramaki is the man pulling all the strings at Section 9, having created the specialist cybercrime unit himself. In Shiro's manga, he is often referred to as the old ape because, well, look at him. Bald on top, with crazy white hair everywhere else, he made a few strides up the evolutionary ladder in the animated series and TV shows that followed, though his hair and goatee remained. Takeshi Kitano, a legend of Japanese cinema, takes on the character in the Paramount remake, adding some much-needed respectability to the project. Despite being 70 years old, the Battle Royale star still carries himself like a younger man. And for all his tenacity, youth is not something associated with Aramaki. Kitano can make any role his own, but with a much rounder face, missing the signature wispy beard, he doesn't much resemble the Aramaki fans have come to know. Ishikawa Chain-smoking tech whiz Ishikawa isn't the most prominent member of Section 9, but he served with both the Major and Bato. The cyber warfare expert started out with a black bushy beard and an unkempt mess of hair in the first manga volume, and he remained rough and ready in anime adaptations. As the oldest field operative on the team, Ishikawa has always been characterized as a little haggard and less powerful than his allies, only joining a fight when it's absolutely necessary. Australian newcomer Lazarus Raturi doesn't exactly fit the bill at first glance, mostly because he only recently hit his 30s and he looks to be in pretty decent shape. For most roles, this would be a good thing. But it also puts him at odds with the traditional scruffy image of Ishikawa, who looks every bit his age and is fond of cigars and whiskey over fitness. Togusa as far as the manga is concerned, Section 9 operative Togusa is an emotional wreck who struggles with self-esteem issues and insecurities about his ability to contribute to the cause. This side of the character is less pronounced in the anime adaptations, however. There, Togusa comes across as far more accomplished and confident. Both things he needs, so he can pull off that mullet. While Togusa's hairstyle is the character's most recognizable feature, he's known for going retro from head to toe, with a fashion sense that often gets him teased by his teammates. The first thing you notice about Chen Han's Togusa is his severe severely toned down mullet. The star addressed the issue of his character's iconic do in the run-up to the Ghost of the Shell release, saying, There's very different kinds of mullets. How big is the party in the back? Rest assured, fans, we're going to have the mullet. While the actor insisted that the family man side of Togusa would be respected, he isn't much of a visual match. Saito 
As nothing but a supporting character in the manga series, Saito didn't even get an appearance in the 1995 anime. It wasn't until the Ghost in the Shell standalone complex TV series that his character became something more, as Section 9's sharpshooter. Their version of Saito is a former mercenary who lost his left eye to the major in battle, before later joining her at S9 and having it replaced with an enhanced one. Saito's most distinguishing feature is his Hawkeye, which links with satellites to allow him unparalleled accuracy with his long-range weapon. Paramount got it right when they decided to stick with his left eye eye patch in their remake, despite the English language manga showing otherwise. That wasn't their only good decision regarding the character. Yutaka Izumihara's casting ticks all the boxes, including the signature Saito scowl, making him as close to a real life Saito as you could hope for. Borma like Saito, Borma was a minor supporting character in Shiro's work who never made it into the first anime, but returned for the second season of the standalone complex anime series. Unlike Saito, he's taken a huge detour from earlier depictions of the character for the big screen adaptation. Borma's main distinguishing feature is his big, bald head, and that's nowhere to be seen in the live-action adaptation. The studio instead opted for Tawanda Manimo, and a completely different look altogether. Though he isn't a short guy at 6 feet tall, Manimo doesn't have the bulking Borma build, and if you take away his red eyepieces, he'd be totally unrecognizable as the character. Kusei Hideo Kusei isn't the most famous antagonist from the Ghost in the Shell universe, as more of an activist than a straight-up villain, walking the line between freedom fighter and terrorist. Not a manga original, Kusei came into play during the standalone Complex series. Though the Kusei played by Michael Pitt wouldn't be solely based on that character, director Rupert Sanders told Collider, Kusei borrows a few facets from different characters in the series. He's kind of our own creation. Pitt's Kusei has a far more artificial look than the animated Kusei, but despite that, the shape of his face matches up, as does the hairstyle. Not bad. Thanks for watching. Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.